Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So what you just looked at was a, uh, a tuna water press and uh, this was a request from my wife actually to uh, find or build her something that would uh, help her uh, drain the water out of uh, tuna cans and um, she has uh, uh, some hand arthritis that uh, prevents her from applying a lot of force uh, to the can and it's actually difficult for her. And the side benefit or the side story on that is I really like tuna sandwiches, so uh, there was some motivation there. So uh, let's let's check this thing out and uh, talk about it for a sec, and then uh, we'll go through uh, the the build video for it. So let's check it out. So this is the the silly thing that's uh, commercially available, and uh, you know a quick internet search showed that there really wasn't a lot of options out there. Uh, now there is a big kind of restaurant grade commercial quality gigantic thing you know for tins that are you know this size right uh, you know and it's 600 bucks or whatever it is right this is like you know six dollars or eight bucks or whatever it was but it still requires this 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 hand strength to uh, to do it right so what we want the design criteria was, criteria, uh, was that we needed some kind of mechanical advantage, right? Um, either something with a, a toggle action, a clamping action, or whatever um, that would apply some force um, beyond, you know, what you can do with your hands, okay? So, you know, after iterating a few times on some designs, if you follow my Instagram, I put up some pictures of the uh, kind of some of the preliminary stuff that I looked at. I kind of settled on a, you know, a simple screw arrangement here like this, and uh, uh, which is really easy to, uh, to, to put considerable force with, right? In fact, I can just keep going here. Um, and, um, you know, and so now she can you know set this up and let it drain and the dog loves the uh, lo loves the liquid that comes off of that so uh, he, he gets that and uh, and I get tuna sandwiches and uh, she gets uh, no pain in her hands so uh, let's uh, let's uh, go through building this thing and uh, and uh, see how we built it so here's the raw material for our um, the actual uh, pusher and this is uh, uh, what is this? This is like one inch? Yeah, nominally one inch uh, thick starboard, which is a uh, kind of a HDPE they use for uh, uh, boat decks and uh, things like that. It's chemical resistant, you can put it in the dishwasher. It's just kind of nice to work with and it's, it's relatively cheap. So, you know, I've roughed out the circle, that's no big mystery. And you know, the question now is, you know, what diameter to make that, right? So this is about three and a quarter ID here, but I don't want it to fit tight. Uh, I want it to just kind of drop in there and leave some room, you know, when you puncture the lid and go around it, right? Um, what I want is when this, this pushes in, I want the lid to actually to kind of bend a little bit, right? Which, which flares it up a little bit and allows the, tuna water to come out of there, right? So that's kind of the thinking there. So I'm gonna make a little bit undersized here and I'm thinking nominally three inches looks pretty good because it'll be supported well by the uh, the metal lid that comes out of that. So let's make a little sketch. And, um, and I'm just gonna go with this thickness here. So if this is nominally our, um, our blank here like that, right? So in one end, we have the attachment to the uh, um, the screw, right? Okay, so let's just kind of draw that in like so, okay? And that's gonna, <coughs> excuse me, that'll be a little ball swivel deal there, okay? And we'll show that in a bit here. And, uh, okay, so we're three inches there. Diameter 3.00, sorry it's upside down, but uh, I have to look at this. And then, the other thing I want to do too is I want it to push in the center first, right? To kind of scrunch in the center and push push things out towards the towards the uh, the outside edge like that, right? So what I want is just a small angle on there, like so, something like that, right? You know, maybe that's a uh, hundred thousandths or an eighth of an inch out there, something like that, and. Uh, 
and then just to make it and then this will have a little radius on it okay just to soften that and then just so this isn't big and ugly and flat uh, we'll kind of do the we'll do the same thing so it's going to have this kind of uh, flying saucer look to it okay I think is what, what I want there you know this is all kind of subjective right so uh, and then let's uh, kind of uh, eliminate that and then I'll figure out what that angle is um, this little oops Mr. Wizard come on it's not that I'll figure out what this little angle is here in a, in a minute okay all right so uh, let's go get over in the lathe and then uh, let's make a disc out of this and then uh, and then you know I want a little bit of cylindrical part on here still so that I can hold on to it I don't want to create a, a, a machining problem uh, for myself there so <laughs> there it is right side up all right so first first step is we're just going to uh, We'll just mark a center on here, and then uh, we're just going to uh, pop a little center in that, and uh, just to help us hold that thing. So. This stuff machines like like cream cheese, so. It's kind of nice. You can use woodworking tools on it, routers, that kind of stuff, and uh, uh, it's pretty nice. All right, so we got a, a little backing plate in here that we're going to put that disc up against, and uh, it's got some tape on it. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, face it off. So I got a nice flat, flat surface to work with. Makes it all nice and perpendicular there. The actual surface finish doesn't really matter. Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. So, just for um, for traction here, we're just going to put a couple of stripes of. Uh, of uh, double back tape on there to uh, help us drive that. Uh, get those to stick real good. So this is a permacell. Or now uh, I think it's Nitto uh, makes this stuff, and uh, um, this is one of the better. Uh, you know, it's expensive too, actually. Uh, um, better uh, double back tapes um, around, and it stands up to uh, um, coolant reasonably well, uh, which is one of its uh, one of its strong suits, and it is. A little bit of a pain to get the backing off. So usually what I do is just kind of poke through the backing, okay? Once I get a good start there, I kind of poke through the backing and then lift it up there like that. So, and then so you know, let's get your fingers. So if your fingers touch it, you know, you you kind of. Um, Destroy some of its bonding uh, power with your oily, your oily skin. All right, so let's get ready to stick our disc on here. All right, let's get close. And then what I like to do is just get this, get that off. And then what I do is, uh, initially I'll I'll hold it against the center like that. Oops, let's make sure that's that's clean. And then try to keep it parallel, okay? And then give it a little, 
a little squeeze there. All right, and then kind of tap it in. So now it's it's stuck pretty good, but uh, for machining purposes, um, let's see, is that three inches? What is that? Yeah, it's three. I don't know. If, oh, you know what? I can use a small end here. So, so what I'll, I'll do now is I want to put a kind of a larger diameter pusher block, right? You know, to push on a larger to push on a larger radius you have very little influence right at the center right you know from a torque standpoint so if you have something touching out a little further it uh, it's just a little sturdier setup and then I'll give the tailstock a pretty good pretty good gronk and then reseat okay that should be fine for driving that thing Let's zero the DRO. I'm going to zero it on the uh, the bottom here, actually, so um, I know when I'm when I'm close there. Oops. Take a measurement and then uh, okay. Okay, and If you're not careful, you can clean out your whole chip pan in a, in a, a few milliseconds if uh, <laughs> you're not uh, paying attention there. All right, so we're going to swivel the compound around a little bit. So, that's a zero. We're going to make a 20 degree cut and what I'm going to do is, because I'm exceedingly lazy and I don't feel like swiveling it all the way around, right, and screwing around, I'm going to run the lathe in reverse and I'm going to use this boring bar to kind of cut on the, uh, on the back side. So it's a light cut, so I'm not particularly worried about it. And uh, let's get up in position. So we're going to run this way which will allow the tool to cut, and then we'll just feed in with the, uh, let's see, let's get some travel on the compound there. Let's see how that's gonna work there. Hopefully it doesn't fly out. <laughs> that's the danger. That's like cream cheese. So let's uh, prevent that same problem again. <laughs>
that's about an inch, a little over an inch. Um, yeah, I think I want a little more than that. Okay, so we're gonna uh, drill our um, our ball retainer hole now, and I want to drill to a certain depth here from the tip of the drill. So what I've done is I have a uh, a device that I can couple the tailstock to the uh, um, to the carriage, right? So um, and you know I just call it a trailer hitch or whatever. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm just going to use the DRO on the carriage, right, to help me drill this thing to the, uh, to the depth that, that I want to drill it to, okay? I hope that makes sense. And you know, I'll show you the little trailer hitch thing in a second here. So that's pretty much zero. So let's zero the DRO. And then we're just going to go in like so to the prescribed depth and then we'll go in with our tool uh, it's 300 and I'm looking for 350, 40, 50 okay so that should be pretty close to 350 deep yeah, it looks about right okay and then I have a radius tool that we're going to reach in there with and uh, cut the, uh, the ball seat in that all right, so we're getting a nice tight close-up here. So here's our here's our radius tool here, right? And it's relieved on this side. So what we need to do is we have to calibrate the uh, the quadrant here of the this hemis. It's going to cut a hemispherical cavity or a spherical cavity, I should say. So that's one quadrant of the circle, and then this is the other quadrant of the circle. In fact, you can see a little center line on there. I think maybe I can see I can see it. I don't know if you can. Um, and uh, so I want to calibrate the Z there and then I want to calibrate the X here, right? So that I can go inside this hole and, uh, and then open up behind this front edge here. So what I'm doing is I'm cre creating a retention lip on that front edge of the hole. So I know what the diameter of the hole is, okay? So it's uh, like 484. Uh, diameter, right? So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm, I'm going to use that to calibrate my tool very carefully and gingerly. I want to go in there. I don't want to cut any uh, I just want to go until it's actually hard to see with all the sunlight in here. Scraped it. Getting close. Okay, there. Just touched it. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to back out without moving anything. I'm going to calibrate my X. 0.484. Okay. And then now what I want to do is I want to calibrate the Z, which is pretty easy. Actually, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use this tool to face it. I'll just face a teeny bit off. Okay, and that's Z0 now. Alright, so let me take the backlash out. Okay, I'm smaller than my diameter. Pretty close. All right, now I'm going to come in. <laughs> sure, it looks like it's going to cut, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so you know what? I need to check my number. <laughs> I don't want to bozo this. All right, double check my number. <laughs> So I'm gonna so just so I can verbally tell you, well, it's so I can pay attention when I'm working here. I'm gonna go in 325, and then I'm gonna come out 
until I see half inch diameter or maybe a thou or two more um, for that cavity and that should be what we want so let's let's do that all right so I'm going in 325 25 okay and I'm gonna come out yep and it's cutting all right there's half inch I'm gonna go let's go 502 all right now I'm gonna back off my diameter and I should be able to just come out yep I did everything right. Let's take a look in there and see how it looks. Oh yeah, it looks like a spherical thingy in there. It's a little bit hard to see, so we're gonna check it with this. And that's the idea, is it shouldn't. There we go. And that's what I want. It's retained, but it can it can waggle around, right? Yeah, I probably could have gone to five inch, half inch or whatever, okay? And then I can I can still pop it up for cleaning and stuff, so. So basically, this the ball is displacing the, the springy material to go in there. It's, it's a snap fit. Okay, cool. All right, that works. All right. And you know, when you're doing this kind of stuff in the lathe and you're pulling real hard, make sure there's not a not a sharp tool bit behind you. And how do I know that? <laughs> so this is sometimes the the challenging part. Is this this perma cell sticks so well? that um, sometimes it can be a little tricky to uh, to get off without harming your part. And that was one of the reasons, you know, I put two stripes with a space between them because what that does is that leaves a, you know, a pretty small channel, but it is a channel uh, in between the two stripes of tape. And as you can see, I'm, I'm smacking it pretty good. So patience is your friend. Let's just put it that way. I'll just let that sit for a bit. Actually, you know what? I have a hole all the way through that's pretty good size, so I should be able to just kind of press that off. So let me let me just do that instead of uh, putzing around with this here. Yeah. All right, suitable uh, suitable deal there. Let's give it a little. English there. All right. Voila. All right, so we'll do the second side, which is a slightly different angle. And uh, Bob's your uncle. So this is just a, a locating feature. I'm going to weld the ball to um, this. Uh, I'm going to weld the ball to this uh, rod here. Let's see. Okay, that'll work. Uh, so I'm just going to. I'll drill a little hole into this, and then that'll be kind of self fixturing and make it like super, super duper easy to uh, weld that little puppy on there. So let's Max chamferitis on here. That. And what I want to do is get that shoulder just so. It's so nice. Good for that.
Face a little flat on there. That's just the interface with that shoulder, so uh, the weld is tighter. Always check your work before you take it out of the uh, out of the machine. Okay, so and you can see there that little interface. It's a nice little spot to put a put a little weld there. So, okay. All right. Let's use uh, now. It'll probably fall in the chip pan. With uh, my luck. So here's our strainer uh, piece, and. Um, you know, a lot of people don't think you can cut stainless on a vertical bandsaw, but it's just not true. Um, if you have the right pitch blade for the thickness, it's not a problem. So we're running pretty slow here. You can see the blade speed's pretty low. So what I want to do is we're going to profile this, but I just want to whack some of this material off uh, just to get us a little closer to the uh, a little closer to the profile. that mill a lot tougher um, makes it uh, more <laughs> much more difficult to uh, to chip <laughs> trust me camper <laughs> tool around this now I'm gonna watch it if it's a where the hell is it anyway? Might as well deburr while it's while it's in there, right? You know, uh, sheet metal or things like this sometimes they're not very flat, so uh, I can really make your chamfers look like like doo doo uh, if. Uh, you know, the part's not flat, so uh, just beware of that kind of stuff. I should have controlled the Z position of the tool a little bit because it's, uh, it's actually cutting into the, the fixture a little bit. It, it decides how deep it wants to go automatically uh, unless you specify a, uh, excuse me, a, a Z depth for the tip of the tool. But, uh, Oh, well that looks like it might have been a boo-boo. I'm just opening these holes up. These are my hold-down holes uh, for the CNC. But these outer ones, I really want to um, open them up so the rods can go in there. Yeah.
like that. Okay. And that was a boo boo. <laughs> that plunge spot uh, that nicked the opposite side. So, bozo strikes. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna bend the uh, the tie rods now. So we need a bend that's. We're, we're gonna trim it to fit. So. Um, I'm just putting a little witness mark on there. So I'm going to bend two pieces and then we'll, we'll kind of trim them. Um, okay. Now this is a 3 8 uh, diameter stainless rod. And I just want a 90 degree bend. Uh, actually, thinking about it. Gee, would a, would a different angle look better? Hmm. All right, well, let's do 90 to start with. Let's see. Let's see what we got there. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty close to 90. Nice 90. I'm, I'm kind of thinking here. Um, boy, I wonder if. Ah, you know what? I'm going to go with the 90. So screw it. Okay, so let's do the same thing on this end, and then I'll just cut them off to uh, uh, cut them off to suit. And this is a. Uh, Homemade bender, you guys might have picked up on that. <laughs> and uh, I do have plans for it. If anybody's interested in building their own, just email me. And I will be happy to send the plans to you. Oop, a little too much. Put the, the body gronk on it. That's pretty nice now. Right, now. We're just gonna mark them for cutting. Oops. Come on. It's kind of a hard thing to hold there. Get a good line on it. So I measured from the uh, outside to the uh, the boss. All right. So now I got a good line on there to the other side. That's a better way to hold it. And then I'll hacksaw these off and then just kind of belt sand it back to that line. And then uh, that'll be our uh, that'll be our thing there. Actually, I probably want a little bit of spring on it to kind of help squeeze that bushing when, uh, when we're welding it, right? So if we squeeze that bushing when we're welding it, um, then it'll kind of keep it in place. It sounds good anyway, right? <laughs> so this next one is uh, this next one's for our friend uh, Brian Block, who claims that uh, that I have some kind of uh, magical um, magical uh, hacksaw blades that um, are somehow special. So that's a uh, that's a, a Baco uh, a Swedish uh, hacksaw blade, uh, 14 tooth per inch. So I, I have several hacksaws set up with different pitch blades. So when I'm cutting thick stuff, I grab the coarse one, and I cut thin stuff, I grab the thin one, and uh, or the lots of teeth per inch. Anyway, that's for you, Brian. All right, I got it all fixtured up for for tacking here. 
So uh, this is aluminum bronze, 954 aluminum bronze. This is stainless steel. And this is um, this filler rod is silicon bronze, okay, which is a pretty good combo uh, uh, for joining these uh, these materials together. Now, um, um, so what I want to do is I want to tack uh, the stainless rod to the bronze. I'm not going to put the ball on just yet because I realize that I won't be able to get the thing apart. Uh, once I weld the ball on so uh, I, I got a little bit of work to do on the screw here to put the the grip uh, that we that we're going to use to uh, so we can turn the uh, the screw so I think I'm going to tack it here tack it here both sides and then uh, tack these rods to the uh, the strainer plate there and uh, go from there Once I get a couple of tacks on there, I kind of want to take that rod out of there. I don't want it in there while I'm uh, doing the, the main welding here. I'm actually going to work. You guys pretty much knew that uh, this thing wasn't going to escape uh, <laughs> some filing here. So we're going to take care of this kind of bumpy looking weld here. So, um, and once again, that's silicon bronze. So that's where we're going for there, something like that. Okay, so it looks like a bicycle frame, right? With a good, nice brazed joint. And actually, I got some low spots here. I should probably. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to go back and uh, add a little bit of filler to some of these uh, these perceived uh, low spots here um, before I get uh, get medieval on this here. Yeah, I don't like this little dingus McGee there. Okay, so let me. I'm going to go do that, and then uh, we'll be back for some filing. This is a uh, this is a chainsaw file, um, and it's perfectly cylindrical, uh, so it doesn't taper, um, and it's a uh, it's a relatively uh, fine. I don't know. I call it a medium, I guess. Uh, grit or cut. Cut is the correct term. But, uh, you know, when you have a, uh, you know, these are slightly tapered. That's a bastard cut there. That's, let's try that one. Um, oops. I don't want to. I don't want to cut into that, and I don't want to cut into that. It, we don't want to. We want a smooth transition between that and that and that. Does that make sense? That, that, and that. <laughs> That's a lot of that. So I'm trying to put a nice fillet in there. That actually, you know what? I like this other one better. It, it cuts a little slower. Gives you that control that you want. Anyway, I'm not gonna. I know some folks out there like to, like to watch the filing, but it's yeah, 
these segments can get <laughs> kind of long. But feel free to fast forward if you're not into if you're not into filing. All right. So you know, like a lot of things, uh, it takes a little patience, right? All right. All right. So I'm gonna. Next part of this, uh, these two little holes right here, what we're going to put on there is, it's, uh, I'm just calling it the fence. So basically, it'll be a, a curve piece um, uh, that plugs into those holes, but matches this curve here. And what that's for is when you drop the can in, it's basically the stop. So it'll come up about halfway, something like that, and um, stop the can when you're, when you're holding it uh, in this attitude here. It'll drop in and it'll stay kind of like a V-block, right? So it's actually kind of interesting because it's, it's got a curve and then two bends that are in an opposite plane down and we're trying to nail a couple of centers, right? So, um, you know, mildly tricky, uh, I guess is how I would characterize it. So um, my thought is the first thing is to bend this arc here and get the, uh, the arc kind of the way I want it. And then, um, uh, try to bend uh, the the center lines there. So uh, anyway, let's give it a go. See what happens. And this is uh, this is this uh, uh, eighth inch diameter uh, stainless filler rod here. And um, so that's what we're going to use. Uh, yeah, I wonder if I wonder if that would be better. Well, I still have to I still have to do one bend. So I was thinking if I bend it first like that, and then bent the curve. I want to overbend the curve, right? So I want to have extra on the curve and then bend down uh, at that point. So I think is what I want to do. That sounds good anyway. So we're going to use this. This is just a uh, something I made a long time ago. Uh, it's kind of a hook bending fixture. Um, but you can see that uh, you can catch the, uh, the end there so you don't have to hang on to it. Cut that end off there. So, and this is, this is pretty, 
pretty close. You see it's a little smaller than this. You know, when you bend wire like this, there's some spring back, so it's kind of a, you know, depending on the hardness of the wire, and this wire is pretty hard actually from being cold drawn, um, there's some variability in the spring back, right? So you always have to have something smaller. So it just depends on the condition of the material, how much smaller that is. The, the stiffer and harder it is, the, uh, the smaller uh, the, uh, or the, the greater the spring back, I should say, and the smaller the form that you would need. So, um, so let's see, I want a little bit of straight there. Yeah, all right, whatever. Oops, you just gotta do something sometimes. Okay, all right, so we got almost 180 there. Let's see what it looks like here. Okay, so it's a little, it's a little big, but actually, let's let's look on the um, on the actual um, deal here. Let's see how it looks. All right, so there's the piece we just bent. Let's see what we look like here. All right, so just eyeballing it there. It's actually a pretty good match with this with this OD here, but. This radius is slightly inboard from that, so we actually need it a little tighter than that. Um, yeah. You know, it's uh, it's a lot easier to to uh, open a bend up, you know, to make it a larger radius than it is to make it a smaller radius. That's always uh, that's always. Let's see if we can hand work this a little bit. Let's see if we can get a little bit out of it. I think I did anything there. All right, let me fuss around with this a little bit and then um, see if I can get a little closer. So this thing here, uh, the radius that it produced is, a, and you can see how much spring back there is, right? So that's pretty considerable. Um, this is, what is this? Two and seven eighths inch is in diameter. So I found this sitting over on the lathe here. This is a little bit smaller here, right here. And I think we're gonna try that because we're not off by much. Um, when you look at the, when you look at the, the radius here, it's pretty close. All right, it's pretty close. I just wanna move it in just a whisker. So let's, uh, let's get this out of here. We're gonna we're gonna try this little guy here, and if I'm lucky, I can drop this below the surface just a little bit, and use that as a. Uh, actually, this is gonna. So this is this. Is, I'm just using this as a uh, a retainer to um, keep it from pop the rod from popping out. Let's see. Let's see, add a little bit more there. All right. So you want to do the whole bend in in kind of one one whack. Ooh, yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. All right. And let's uh, do a comparison here. And oh yeah, it's it's basically one wire thickness smaller which I think is about what we want. So uh, let me uh, nick this off here. And I'm such a weak kid anymore. I used to be able to do this with just plain old diagonal cutters, but now bolt cutters and I'm an old wuss. I got no hand strength anymore, so. All right, let's see here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So you see how it's 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 stuck and under there at the ends. That means the radius is back here. So I'm gonna call I'm gonna call that close enough. And uh, so what I'm gonna do now, I think, I think, I think, is line this up. I want to find that tangency point there because I, I want to try to get at least one bend with some straight material. Um, and I'm gonna mark it through this hole so I know what the centers are. And then cross my fingers that I line it up on the bender. 
you know, you got, there's a couple things going on. We're coming up, we're coming around, and then we have a center to center to hit too, right? So it's, it's actually kind of a challenging little uh, bending job. I had to change my approach a little bit. Um, the bench vise was, wasn't gripping it um, locally at the intersection there well enough. Uh, so what I did, I put a piece of copper, just loose copper in there and clamped it in this precision vise. And then this also allows me to, to kind of uh, uh, adjust the, the bends a little bit dynamically, <laughs> hammering. Um, so it looks pretty good right now. And then I have to just decide how much I, uh, I want to whack off there. Um, and hopefully our, uh, our radius didn't change much um, in the process. So let's cross our fingers here. All right, it doesn't look too bad. This end looks a little funny there, but uh, um, it is just a tuna can press, right? All right, let me do a little massaging there, and then um, um, let's see what happened to that. So yeah, you can see the, uh, and, th and that's why I put the copper in there, so I had an opportunity to, instead of bending it against a immovable hard edge there, it kind of um, gave it a little bit of softness there. So that was a, that was a challenging little bend to do, actually. And, um, in retrospect, what I probably should have done was, um, and this is just a spacer to uh, to set the height of, uh, of that, um, I probably should have marked the the maybe locations, I guess I would call it, of the, uh, um, you know, where I kind of wanted it, right? And then um, bent the thing up and then drilled the holes. <laughs> I probably could have saved myself quite a bit of pain there. Um, all right, so that sets the, uh, the parallelism there of that. And I should be flush. Yeah, and I'll just put a little weld on that and that'll retain that forever. And there's my, my complicated V-block. So, all right, let's weld that little thing and then uh, favor and cut that thing off while you're in the saw. You'll thank me later when you step you don't stab yourself. We got the uh, these are the uh, I'm gonna call them the butterfly wings to the uh, the knob uh, for tightening the uh, the press up. And I'm gonna go ahead and engrave the little ox logo on the uh, on the face of one of those, uh, just to have a little ID on the tool. Um, so I use this template here just to you know kind of get a positioning uh, that I like, and it has a uh, there's a little dot in the center that's the center of the the actual program. Okay, and um, so. First, we gotta hold it. Uh, I'm gonna hold it on a little mini pallet here. I can get my uh, stuff together here, like so. And um, so I'll orient it parallel to that uh, this back edge here, and then we're gonna engrave in this area here. Um, what's interesting is we have kind of a tapered shape, right? So I want to pick up the center line of that, right? And I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to use a, a Hamer uh, 3D taster um, to uh, bisect that uh, space at a certain a certain spot and uh, give us the center line. So, uh, uh, which is, you know, pretty pretty normal stuff. So, let me get it straight with the world, and then we'll uh, get the Hamer in there, and uh, we'll set our. Uh, our work offset uh, and engrave this. Right. We're 
just gonna I'm just gonna um, pick a spot that's kind of near our center line. Come up, and then come over. And what's interesting about the uh, the hammer is it, it accounts for the ball diameter, right? All right, so there's halfway, or excuse me, that. So the spindle's on the on the edge now. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, zero the x-axis. Okay, and then I'm going to back this off, and then um, without moving the y, I'm going to come over to the other side and come down, and then come back. And I'm going to get some goofy number, okay, which is 8935. So half of that, 4467, okay, is, um, is our center line. All right, so let's go back. Four, four. Four, six, seven. Okay, so that's that's the center of that part. So I'm gonna. That's our um, our X zero for uh, G fifty four in this case. All right. So we're gonna set our uh, our uh, X axis, and the way we do that is because it's X zero, right? And then we're just gonna hit the measure button, and it's gonna transfer that number. Uh, well, the position into that. And you can see that it only changed a little bit because the last job that I was doing was pretty close to that, uh, that center. So then we'll go ahead and uh, uh, rinse and repeat for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the Y. So this is a three inch gauge block and I set all my tools at this level here. Uh, not on the deck, but above. Um, and you know, most of your work's up, up in the vise, so I wanna be it's actually the same number as the uh, the bottom of the vise here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just verifying that uh, there's no nothing weird going on. So I check the gauge block, and then then I look at the display. Yes, I'm, I'm where I think I should be. And then what I'm going to do at this point is drive over to my part, okay, and in the area that. Uh, and this has a Z component to it, or a, a Z ability too, right? So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down and zero this out. Okay, and that's my work offset right there. And I can read the number directly off of the, uh, the position here. For ready for assembly here. Okay. 
Okay. Well, there it is. And, uh, I don't think you're ever going to get that compressed, but uh, you can put it in a in a bowl or in the sink or whatever to drain the uh, the water out of the tuna there. So, so I'm gonna. I'm going to bead blast this and uh, give it a kind of a uniform finish. Let's see. <clears throat> Pop that up. And um, um, then I'm going to call it good. And then I'm going to let uh, the missus uh, test it out and give me some feedback on it. Thanks for watching.